Hi, my name is Alex with Ape Tech Tech Tutorials, and today I'm going to be walking you through page templates in Confluence. If you've ever wondered what these over 100 templates do, why they're there, and how you can use them, you've come to the right video. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing, drop a like if you get value out of this video, and if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, let me know in the comment section below. Let's jump into Confluence and explore page templates. All right, so there's a couple of ways to look at your templates. I'm gonna show you one way, which is basically off the navigation bar, we have the templates. Now, this is not the only way to get there. You can also get to your templates, and this other method is probably a little bit more realistic to what you're gonna be experiencing when you're doing this, but whenever you click the Create button to create a page, you're going to be greeted with a blank page. But if you look on the right-hand side, you will notice that there's a template section here. And this will have all 128 templates available to you. And you can hover over any of them and you will see an example of them. Now, in this video, I kind of want to focus on just going over the templates. So I'm going to be going back to the navigation and walking you through the navigation side of how to get to these templates and, and what these different templates do. But at the end of the day, either way is going to get you to basically your destination, which is you're going to be able to use a template that's in Confluence so that you can just use it. Now, before I get into both of those or talking about the templates, let me tell you why it's important. I like leading with why. And so I like using templates. And one of the reasons why you should consider using the templates is if you get like writer's block when you look at a blank page, if you're greeted by this page here and your immediate thought is, what do I do with this empty canvas? Well, one of the things for you to consider is that Atlassian has taken into consideration so many of our day-to-day -day common activities, common meetings that we have, and created these beautiful templates that you can just instantly leverage and start populating. So that's the reason why. You don't have to use templates. It's, these are not obligatory in any way, shape, or form. And in a future video, I'm actually going to show you how to make your own templates, but you don't have to use these. I recommend you use them though, because again, I'm not very creative. And so I like that I can just go and pick something based on a topic or theme that I'm interested in and have an instant page that is already formatted. And all I need to do is start plugging and data in. And so this is a really, really big advantage, especially for your less common creative folks. But anyways, let's go back to the templates and let's take a look at these. So we can see that there's over 128 different templates. And they're categorized by like business strategy, design, documentation and reporting, human resources, marketing material, personal, and a couple more categories. I won't go through them all here. These are really, really interesting. I, I really do like that Atlassian does this. And so you can essentially just click on any of these and you will see an example on the right hand side. And this is kind of interesting or really neat because Atlassian has taken the time to format these pages with some of the features, some of the, the neat little tricks that Confluence can do. And so another reason why you would want to consider the templates is because sometimes you don't know what you don't know. So you can use the templates as inspiration for your own personal pages so that you can figure out, oh, I can put these kind of emojis. I can put these kind of functions or macros, what they, as they call them in Confluence. And you can figure out how to better organize the flow and presentation of your data. You can get creative with how to use tables and how to use highlights and call outs and things of that nature. But again, you don't know what you don't know. So you can come in here and just see what are the different options? What are the different ways you can color and highlight your specific data? You can see that you can add text boxes, you can add lists, you can add check boxes with respect to like actions. You can add more tables. You can add these little cool emojis, right? And you can go through all these different ones and you're going to see that every single one of them is ever going to be so differently. This is a really cool one for the five whys where you have five different problems and you state why and you come with, with your solution down here. One of the fa my favorite ones that I like using, I actually like using two and that's the daily standup. And you can see that I obviously use them because they're at the top left hand side of my search here. But the daily standup is an, it's a cool one. I don't really recommend this one all too much, but if you like taking notes, if you're kind of like a more, a little bit more organized of a scrum master, you may want to consider using the daily standup template because this daily standup template will basically give you 
a table for each day of the week, ability to add each user, and then you can track what their priorities are, what the progress is, and any problems that your developer may be encountering. The retrospective though, this is one that I use a lot. I use this one ex exhaustively, and this is just a great template to just capture your, your sprint retrospective. So you can capture what you should start doing, what you should stop doing, what you can keep doing. You can always modify these templates as well. So if you're, maybe you do a different style of retrospective, you can definitely change these headers so that you don't have to use the default here. But definitely, I, this is something that I use quite a bit, uh, almost religiously, because again, I, I just like the way this template's set up and I've been doing it for like five years like this. So these are the different templates. Now, if you ever wanna use the template from this interface, from the interface of being in the template section, you can just click on this use button and it will go and create it. So this will automatically put it in just like the last space that you were in and you have the page. And all you have to do at this point is give it a title, put some in, and start filling in the information. You'll notice that there's these page properties and a couple of other cool things that are happening. And these are all already designed. You absolutely could have created this page all from scratch, just based off your creativity and your confluence skills. But if you're just in the heat of the moment, you want to capture the information and you just want to get straight down to business and recording the information or data capturing information, then I recommend you go down this template route. And I also recommend that you get creative, go out there, create, go through the templates and check them all out. There's literally 128 of them. So there's some for designs, there's some for dependency mapping, and there's just so many different types. And, and these can be personal too, right? You don't have to put these templates in a public shared space. You can really use these in your own personal space and be able to create interesting confluence pages that are very specific to the information you're trying to capture. You can also do like file lists where you can essentially embed files. You can do postmortems from Ops Genie. You can do some invoicing. You can do change management. And so there's quite a bit of like just day-to-day -day, um, processes and information that you're typically capturing already. And having it in one place in Confluence is just really, really advantageous because then you get the power of Confluence to be able to search through things. You can lock pages up so that only specific individuals can do it. And so if you're not using a template and if, you, if you're struggling to like, you're not using Confluence because you're like, ah, it's overwhelming. I don't know how to use it. I don't know what to do. Start with the templates. I recommend you go there, play around with a couple of them. If you have a sandbox, go use them in the sandbox. But Confluence pages here, the Jira reports, this one I really like. You won't see a description, but you can embed Jira. We are going to be talking about this in the future, but you can embed Jira uh, data into your Confluence page. And so it's really, really neat. I really like them. And like I said, you can either click the use button here or you can go to create and you can essentially uh, pick them from the right hand side. Or really as a third way, if you don't, if you're not comfortable with any of these, let's say you go to your actual space, you can come over here to like retrospectives. You can click on the plus button and this will take you to again, another blank page where you can then click on your template and now start using your template. So lots of different ways to get here. All roads eventually lead to Rome. And so Hope you enjoyed this one and I hope you're using and considering templates. Make sure you're subscribed and make sure you drop a like because in the future, we are going to be talking a little bit more about your integration. We're going to be talking about how to integrate or create your own templates in Confluence. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on any of those informational videos. Thanks and I'll see you in the next one. It's only worth it if you work for it. It's only worth it if you work for it. I won't stop till they hear me now.